Hi Jim. Hi Gulshan. Hi. You guys are promoting Smoke, which is your web series that premieres this week on Eros, and I have ten questions for you guys. All right, shoot. <laughs> okay. So Smoke talks about the underbelly of Goa, right? The Goa that we know and love. I want to know from you guys what did you discover about Goa that you didn't know before the shoot? That Goa is such a conducive environment to do creative work. I mean, in, in Mumbai, everything is rushed. Everybody's late. Everybody's everything is late, and you're rushed. Like oh, it's a sundown. You know, do the Goa doesn't have that energy. Even if we take our energy there, within the first four days, everything is. Everybody's energy is in sync with Goa, and then you just because that's the only way to function there, and that's quite fantastic. And I didn't have this realization before when I worked on the Marathi. While doing smoke, I realized like I think this is how work should be done. You know, you should just you know relax, process. You should take your time, and good work happens when you take time. It's true. I didn't serious really... answer. See, not very fun answer. No, I didn't. Nice. I didn't think about it, but yeah, I completely agree. Like but here, not chill in Bombay also. No, no, I'm not. Um, like if uh, he appears to be chill, he's really good at appearing to be. Chill. He's a good actor. <laughs> um. Inside, I'm boiling. No, what's the thing? Uh, but yeah, in Bombay, if a day shoot is cancelled, it's like, oh, yeah. So when will we have to make this day up? And you start yeah. thinking about all of that over there. Shoot is cancelled. You're like, let's go to the fucking beach. Yeah, you just sit there. Let's like, go because you're shooting at the beach. Let's go for breakfast, guys. You know, it's so good. Yeah. I love days off there. Yeah, that's true. What do you envy most about each other as actors? His confidence. He's extremely as himself. Jim as himself. As an actor, I'm better, of course. But <laughs> as as an individual, he's extremely. I've known him for like quite some time before he was Jim Saab and all that. Before Nija was like such a blockbuster, and everybody was talking about Jim and memes of him were spreading around. Uh -huh. It was fantastic. I'm really happy for him. But 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 he's always been this confident guy. I remember watching an interview with him and Anupama Chopra, and what the hell was going on? Which one? And Khan. You were looking into her eyes, man. Khan, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Come on, that one was great. Yeah. <laughs> that was such a yeah, nice yeah. interview. She was just asking. Yeah, I really enjoyed yeah, it was that. a good one. interview, but then yeah. he, 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 did you see him? Of like, course, you know, I mean. Yeah, I mean, he it takes balls, I and mean, he definitely has balls <laughs> to do what he does. And so I think I envy that about him. The his natural confidence that he has. Amazing. Your turn, Jim. I think that he's good in everything that I've seen so far, uh, both stage and film. He can do all of these uh, the, uh, Hindi accents, which I can't do yet, and that's what I envy about Please him. Give it some for time, sure. man. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm, I can't do that. It's I'm not like I have everything in my back pocket. Like you know, there's nobody work can. That you can do it all. Do you guys remember what you were? Reading or watching or listening to while you were shooting, shooting smoke that just helped you get into the space. Yeah, there are sometimes playlists that I use, but then I've stopped doing that for a long time now. I don't use certain playlists unless I really have to. If I feel that in that particular scene I have to be in a certain, you know, psychology has to be a certain mm. way, and I have to like, work myself up emotionally or you know the energy, get the energy there. Then maybe I listen to something specific. I have already worked that out. Like you know, these are the. Songs or this is the song that I have to listen to or something like that. But in Goa, nothing. All kinds of music, all kinds of music. I mean, he's like he's he's such a variety of music. I mean, his playlist has like all kinds of music and it's quite cool. So nothing in particular actually. Yeah. Just Goa has such amazing songs. You know. Sometimes you don't have to listen to anything. It's just the water, the beach. You just keep listening to wow. the beach. Sure. Sure. I think swimming in the ocean is probably one of my favorite things of all time. Yeah. Um, so I I really enjoy. It. And then you don't take music with you to the beach. You know, you just yeah. like you're, you're just there. What I was reading, I really don't know or remember because I was shooting Padmavat at the time and it was really hectic. Yeah. Like really hectic. Yeah, I understand. Like. Um, uh, shoot seven to seven, take a flight to Goa, shoot all night, fly back to Bombay, shoot seven to seven. It was like those. There were there were days like that in between. Yeah. So I don't remember books and music. It was like sleep. sleep. <laughs> Get up. Yeah. How much can you sleep in your free time? Yeah. So what's the best part about not being a stereotypical Bollywood hero? That exactly. <laughs> sleep. Well. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I think it's there is a certain stereotype that I've had to sort of I'm still fighting. I mean that 
So I play antagonists or negative roles, and I keep getting these. Ah, have you met Jim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I met you also. No. Uh, Philip, I've yeah. seen you somewhere. I've seen you, bad guy, and. Um, I haven't watched any of your films. Bro. That's okay. Jim, I've never watched him on film. I've only seen him on stage, and he's amazing. People hey. just think that I like playing grey characters and villains and antagonists. Or like, I'm tired of it. I'm not. Yeah, I'm tired of it. Like really, I, I, I'm, I'm really trying to sort of emerge. Out of that uh, that that stereotype that people think that I have, it's really easy, you know, when you slot people and ha, ah, this guy is good at playing antagonist. No, I'm I'm even tired of turning down films, uh, like you know, because they want me to play antagonist and Jeez. villains and things like that. <clears throat> you feel the same, don't you? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, I said all of this already. Um, yeah, you know, new things, old things. Um. <laughs> What's the one emotion that you find hardest to create on screen to do naturally? Happiness. Really? Like laughter? See, I can be re I can do everything really well. I mean if you, if I prepare well for it, you have to of course if there's an emotion that you have to emotionally prepare and sometimes it's a physical preparation, sometimes it's very internal. But I know many people who can just turn the taps. Just like turn the taps. Huh? Now you have to cry and like <laughs> Oh yeah. And cut and up. Yeah. Done. And they genuinely cry, okay? Yeah. They genuinely cry. And it's something that they're able to harness. It's a skill. Cry. It's a skill. That comes real. I have to really psych myself like up. Right now. I have He's gonna cry. Yeah, yeah. Already, already yeah, he's already, yeah. See, yeah. that, yeah. that, that's crying, the heart. So it's not really an emo emotion that I cannot harness, but I can't really get the tabs flowing. I have to really work up to that. So that's something. When I watch, you know. That one is easy for me, yeah. Yeah. Crying, so, so it's what's hard for I'm you? I'm on the verge of tears at all Happiness time. is hard for you. No, no, not necessarily happiness, but... Um, taking your shirt off, taking your clothes off is easy for you. Yes. Crying is easy for you. Yes. Everything seems to be easy for you. What's, yeah, what's hard? Easy, Nothing's hard then. Preparation. If you're given preparation, everything oh. is possible. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. A film I wish I hadn't refused. I'm really happy with the choices that I've made. I've no regrets. Done everything that has been offered me. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. That's no, a lie. I mean, last year I've been rejecting some things, but uh, which means that you're getting really good offers. Huh? <laughs> no, but but up until Sanju, that was me taking everything that was offered. Me. The question should have been that what all films that you think you should have been part of. <laughs> Ever since uh, being cast in Sanju already and waiting for Padmavat and Sanju to come up, in that time I've rejected films. But up until the ones that have come up, I've done everything that has been offered me. Who's a film character that you'd like to be best friends with? You know, someone that you can just really chill with? A film character? Mm -hmm. I have this burning urge to say my, one of my characters. You say now, which one? I'm just trying to have some variety and not be so self-centered. <laughs> I'm going to seem like one of those, oh, he's full of himself. You know, right? What's it? Butch. Butch Cassidy. Really? Butch Cassidy. Butch Cassidy? Oh, yeah. Or maybe the Sundance kid. Maybe then I could be Butch Cassidy. Oh, like that, is it? Yeah. Of course, it can be a fictional life also. That's yeah. Indiana Jones. I think yeah. I like Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. I have our adventures and yeah, exactly. you know, I'll be the sidekick. And, exactly. Yeah. And then someday, suddenly there's no, I am Indiana Jones. You know, I'm like... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's one movie dialogue that you see yourself using in life constantly? What? No, picture of Ibaki. What? I use it very philosophically. Sometimes when I'm disappointed, when things don't go my way, I keep telling myself, picture bhi baki hai mere dost. Have, have you seen in uh, Mean Streets where uh, the Rob De Niro comes in to the bar and then like his friend grabs him and takes him back back to, to the back room and is talking about the money that he owes to the guy. He just, um, he's just like, what? What? <coughs> he says, what? Like, 80 times in a row. Like an Italian accent. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. That's my favorite. <laughs> On a more serious note, what's the one good thing that you want to see come out of the whole Me Too movement that we're seeing right now? Regulations and guidelines. So that uh, everything is formalized. Everybody knows that there is a safe... How to create a safe environment for everybody to work in. Uh, put an end to this. 
I mean, one cannot be absolute about it because yeah. no matter what you do, there'll always be a little. But you know, that's always going to remain there. But if you put the right kind of guidelines and regulations in place in all the work environments, all the studios, producers, houses, casting agencies, everybody who has anything to do with the entertainment business, regardless of the format, uh, they all should have the guidelines and it should be strictly enforced by all the unions. Mm -hmm. Not only actors' unions, every union. So there is a safe environment. Sometimes it's difficult to even assess like did i was i just sexually harassed like was i was that inappropriate you don't know but when you have guidelines and it's difficult to come up with the guidelines which is 100 like you know set in stone right now it's going to take some time but that's the whole the point of this movement that you've initiated this process we talk we have that difficult chat with each other and we come up with these guidelines which will be displayed in big bold letters like in airports <laughs> telling you your, your airlines telling you what are your rights <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like what you can't take yeah, on the plane. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, really, really. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like that. It's absolutely like that, and it should be enforced. It's like you can't and take this into the office. In displayed in that, by yeah. law, it has to be displayed in all the offices. Uh, for me, in addition to that, all of that, <clears throat> what you said, of course, because um, the way it affects professionals is is is, is also extreme, but also sensitization and education programs from the bottom up all the way across India to basically stop the neurosis that surrounds sex and sexual education and somehow bring all of this stuff that just now still lurks in the darkness and consequently comes with so many problems into the light of day so that it is a topic to be discussed openly and freely and as simply as we talk about food. And because your film is getting such rave reviews, I have to ask you, kya mar ko dard hota hai? Bahut hota hai dard. Shooting ke dauran nahi, usse pehle taiyari mein bahut dard hota hai. I had a broken leg, I had just fixed it three months before I signed the film. I was doing an eight month, I was supposed to take a year off almost. I said like maybe I can pull back in eight months. I was in a rehab program when the film came and Vasan said that you shouldn't do this movie, but will you please do it to me? Do it for me. So I said, there's no way in hell I can refuse a film that you're offering me because I believe in him as a filmmaker. I believe in his sensibilities and him as a human being. He's a great person, and uh, we work well together as well. So I could, I would never let go of the opportunity of of being part of that film. All the very best <coughs> for Smoke as well. Good luck to you guys, and we'll chat soon. Thanks for Cheers. talking to me. Cheers. Bye bye. Hi, my name is Jim Saab. Hi, my name is Gulshan Devaya. And if you like this video, which you should, subscribe to Film Companion. Yeah, how can you not like him? It's his video. Have you seen the other videos he's been in? My video. It's my video.